For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Tigray People's Liberation Front or TPLF first came to power in Ethiopia in 1991. It remained in power for almost 30 years until 2018. During this period, TPLF committed various atrocities and human rights violations across the country. Throughout its regime and even now during the current civil war in Ethiopia, the TPLF has enjoyed support from the United States and the European Union. Why have the Western powers supported TPLF all this time? What has been the history of TPLF's rise and fall from power in the country? Ilya Samare, editor of Horn of Africa TV, explains. For nearly three decades, the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, uh, once it seized power in Addis Ababa, uh, in Ethiopia, in 1991, it became uh, a client state of the West, a uh, very loyal uh, client state to, to fulfill the, the, the orders of Washington, basically. Uh, a regional uh, proxy force uh, that the West could send to Somalia to invade, to Eritrea, to launch uh, an aggressive border war to crush all uh, opposition within Ethiopia. And so that's uh, the task that it has been fulfilling. Uh, you have to remember the United States have, has this, uh, you know, military uh, project in Africa called AFRICOM, the Africa Command. And they have a, a base in Djibouti and Ethiopia during the, the time of TPLF in power was a trusted ally of the West. It invaded Somalia in 2006, uh, ostensibly to, uh, you know, uh, to extend the war on terror against Al-Shabaab terrorists, but it was to put uh, Somalia in check, you know. Somalia was beginning to reconstitute at that time under the Union of Islamic Courts, some semblance of stability and uh, reconstruction of the state uh, that has been in shambles was beginning to return, and the TPLF invaded. Uh, this time, Eritrea was the only country in the region to oppose this uh, invasion of TPLF of Somalia in 2006. And for that, uh, essentially, Eritrea uh, was punished by having sanctions imposed on it, uh, US engineered sanctions at the United Nations Security Council. So uh, once the TPLF uh, you know, was overthrown from power, you can say in 2018, uh, due to massive popular uprising uh, that have had it with this uh, tyrannical minority rule of the TPLF. Uh, we must not forget that the TPLF was a minority of a minority. It hailed from a region that only uh, constituted 5% of the Ethiopian population, and it did not represent the Tigrayan population as such. It was a narrow clique, a narrow kleptocratic clique that ruled in the name of Tigray. Tigray itself is a minority in Ethiopia, 5% of the population. So the only way TPLF could rule Ethiopia was through uh, ethnic politics, ethnic federalism, it called it, but pitting one ethnic group against the other, vertical polarization, sectarianism, divide and rule between, uh, you know, force, uh, instigating ethnic clashes, uh, inter-ethnic clashes, inter-religious clashes. In that way, this tiny minority clique uh, was able to rule for 27 years with impunity in Ethiopia. All throughout these 27 years, it was fully backed and supported by the United States and the European Union, financially, politically, militarily, and uh, diplomatically. Uh, during these 27 years also, we must not forget it committed horrendous atrocities inside Ethiopia, uh, massacres in the Ogaden Somali region, uh, genocide in the Western uh, region of Gambela, uh, in Oromia, in Amhara, all over Ethiopia. Uh, there were uh, human rights violations, uh, war crimes and crimes against humanity. It also invaded Eritrea in 1998 and uh, 2000. Uh, ostensibly under border clashes, but eventually uh, this was supposed to have been resolved. Uh, the issue uh, when Algiers peace agreement between the two countries 
decided that the border issue would be settled by arbitration court at the Hague. Now, when the arbitration court rendered its verdict in 2002, as prior agreement, it was to be final and binding. Eritrea accepted the ruling of the arbitration court. Ethiopia, TPLF uh, regime rejected this. So uh, for these reasons, sanctions were imposed on Eritrea to punish it. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, eventually uh, resentment and uh, you know, unrest spread all over Ethiopia, initially in the Oromia region called the Oromo protests, but spread rapidly throughout uh, Ethiopia from 2015 to 2018, three years of continuous unrest until eventually this brought uh, down the, the era of minority rule of the TPLF. And from within its EPRDF umbrella organization, uh, Abiy Ahmed was uh, elected as uh, reform uh, prime minister. And what he did in 2018, uh, upon coming to power, the first thing he did was to resolve the, the conflict with Eritrea through peaceful means. He accepted the, the decision of the boundary ruling and the peace agreement and uh, made a trip to Eritrea several months after he came to power. And so uh, once this was resolved, this was not to the liking of the Western patrons of, of TPLF. A new era began to emerge of uh, peace between Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia, an era of stability, of peace, and cooperation. And as I said, this was not to the liking of uh, the patrons uh, of the TPLF regime, which by this time uh, had fled to its uh, home base in Tigray, the northernmost province. And for uh, from 2018 up to 2000. 20, for two years, it continued to reject the peace, peace overtures by Prime Minister uh, Abiy Ahmed Ali. Uh, many uh, peace delegations were sent to, to reconcile the TPLF and bring it back to the fold, but the TPLF remained uh, belligerent. It spread chaos and uh, ethnic conflicts all over Ethiopia because Remember, it, it controlled the security apparatus for, uh, for 28 years. So it had cell networks throughout Ethiopia. It had tremendous uh, wealth at its disposal that it had looted uh, during its kleptocratic regime. Some say uh, upwards of $50 billion were stolen from Ethiopia by the TPLF. And so uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, vast wealth at its disposal. It was able to buy uh, mercenary proxy forces within uh, Ethiopia and try to disrupt and destabilize Ethiopia, to make Ethiopia ungovernable for Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali. The final, I think, straw that broke the camel's back came when uh, you know, elections were postponed, national elections due to COVID pandemic. But TPLF would not accept the National Election Board's uh, decision to postpone uh, the elections for, uh, you know, for some time until, uh, until it was uh, safe to, to conduct national elections. So it went ahead and uh, carried out uh, its own elections in the region and called the central government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali illegitimate and it began to mobilize, to ratchet up, to beat the war drums. Uh, and and uh, in two years time, by the way, it trained uh, upwards of quarter of a million of uh, special forces, militias, and irregular armed uh, you know, units. So by, uh, by the beginning of November, 2020, uh, it undertook a massive preemptive attack on the Northern Command in the Tigray region, the Northern Command of the Federal Army bases. It attacked during the night and uh, killed several thousands. Uh, some estimate up to 6,000 uh, Ethiopian soldiers were killed. The remaining uh, fled to Eritrea 
uh, about 10,000 ethnic Tigrayans, which sites, of course, uh, it captured the strategic heavy weaponry, rocket missiles, and what have you. And so this was an act of treason that uh, no country could tolerate. No country on, a, on earth would tolerate such kind of uh, treasonous insurrection from, from within. So the prime minister, uh, Abi, and the parliament declared the TPLF a terrorist organization and undertook uh, you know, uh, counter-attack which had uh, repulsed uh, the TPLF, cleared it from the capital, and they uh, went and hid in the bushes, in the uh, wilderness. But after uh, several months of, uh, you know, uh, conflict and war in the region, uh, the federal government, as I mentioned earlier, decided to uh, to declare a unilateral humanitarian ceasefire and withdraw from, from Tigray to give peace a chance that was. But during this period, uh, must be remembered, the United, uh, the United States and the European Union allies continuously uh, were supportive of the TPLF. Uh, they, they were putting all kinds of pressure on the federal government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, Ahmed Ali and uh, it is this situation that eventually led to, to the declaration of unilateral ceasefire by the Ethiopian government. But once having declared ceasefire and withdrawn, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the TPLF emboldened and uh, prodded by its, uh, you know, its patrons, Western patrons, decided to expand the military operations and go all the way to Addis Ababa to overthrow the government. So uh, this is the stance of, of Western governments uh, that have been uh, igniting uh, the conflict, uh, emboldening the, the TPLF uh, under the guise of uh, you know, humanitarian intervention uh, and food aid. They have been feeding the war machine of the TPLF essentially. And uh, now that the TPLF is again being routed, the call for negotiation uh, we hear from the West that has been completely silent. Uh, and at the same time, the psychological warfare, the war by media, by Western uh, corporate media has been intensified to uh, an unprecedented degree. Uh, disinformation during the past months was in unbelievable, incredible. I mean, they, they were manufacturing uh, defeat, uh, manufacturing false information that the TPLF was literally on, on the gates of Addis Ababa, just at the outskirts, and uh, pressuring foreign embassies to, to flee the capital of Addis Ababa. Some African countries uh, did, uh, you know, withdraw from, from the capital, but many remain. And this is uh, the situation where we are right now. Uh, the, the TPLF has been completely uh, exhausted. It's all its uh, you know, troop strength, its uh, arsenal. It is fleeing, it's on the retreat, on the verge of uh, defeat. And at this time, we hear once again, the call for negotiations. Thank you.